guys, welcome back to Black, White, and the Grace. Today I'm at my table. We're on day three of a winter storm warning. Yes, we have over a half a foot of snow outside. Um, I think I got some footage that was from day one. So this is the third day. Melting a little bit during the day and then it hits hard at night and typically we get down to like another inch or two at night before we get more snow and there's more snow in the forecast for the next few days as well. No winter storm warning as of yet, but it is mid-April and um, this is the most snow we've ever gotten. We've gotten dusty, or we've gotten like a couple inches in April, but it typically melts right away. This is, it's like sticking around all week and that is a bit unusual. We will take it, we need precipitation. If you are new here, my name is Kylie. We live in Central Oregon. We are a zone three, four, and we have a frost risk all year round. And contrary to local gardeners, I probably started my tomatoes way too early and I'm potting them up and I knew I was going to pot them up. It's just saving me a lot of money. We have a high tunnel that we got approved through the NRCS and this is gonna be our first year really doing high production, lots of tomatoes for if we have extras for market or if we don't, um, we just like to put them up for our family. And that's kind of like what the topic is coming up this week is, is food security. And these little plants, I actually have been working on this project for a couple days and my laundry room is starting to fill up. Last week I was really on a roll worth working outside in the garden and so this week, since it's covered in a half a foot of snow, we are working on inside projects, which to be fairly honest with you are not my favorite, but um, sometimes things need to be done. Caught up on all my laundry. There's a praise report right there. <laughs> well, the last load's in the washer, so there's that. But as you know, if you're a mom or the person who does the laundry, because my husband typically does, but he's been so busy coaching the boys' baseball that, uh, yeah. I now have to do the laundry. <laughs> it's like the first time in like, I do a load here and there, but like this is the first time I'm having to do the laundry in like, I don't know, five years. <laughs> so, I'm, I know, I'm spoiled. <sighs> we'll manage. Okay, so I'm potting up tomatoes. I got some dirt. Um, I'm gonna run out of dirt because I've been working. I did, yesterday I potted up my San Marzanos and my Romas, which I had approximately one billion of those and they're taking up the laundry room. I have decided I need to either scrounge up some more lights or I'm gonna have to start rotating the light. It's gonna, ugh. I was very confident when starting these. I was like, oh, I got plenty of room. And then as, of course, as the method I do, I do it in individual cups, which I'm glad I do because not everybody germinates. So we're gonna do, we're gonna pot these up. <laughs> the moral of my story. And if you've never potted up tomatoes, it's your lucky day. You get to watch me pot up tomatoes. I'm gonna move my camera back a little. Okay. So I, like I said, I do like the multi sew, and we just kind of flip the cup, squeeze it a bit, pops out. Look at those beautiful roots. All right. Inevitably, I am at my kitchen table. I would have done this if I didn't have to trek through the snow in the greenhouse, but here we are. So messes are made. You just gently pull them apart. This is the triple climbing, this is the triple crop. So, uh, then I have one with dirt. So tomatoes, they're kind of special in the fact that they, I don't know if you can see the hairs on that. There's hairs on those tomatoes. Each of those hairs can grow a root. So. This isn't, this is, looks like a good start. They're not leggy yet. Um, this actually, these Sheboygan ones are getting there. But the beautiful thing about tomatoes is you can plant them nice and deep because they will grow roots all along their stem. Isn't that nice? And there you have it. One beautiful potted up tomato. My kids are knocking on the window. I think I saw them rolling up the world's largest snowman. You wanna come? Let's go see. Ah! Light. They're knocking on the laundry room as well. That's because I've been doing so much laundry. Oh my gosh! Can I get it on film? Yeah. For the YouTube? Okay, man. 
hammer. It looks like a gnome. It's pretty Can't awesome, dudes. You guys. Like a giant man hammer. <laughs> Snow's melting? Yeah. I yeah, gotta get you to I don't even remember this. I can hardly push mine. I, can I put my heel by myself. <laughs> Alright, have fun. Wanna see mom? Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I'm on bed. But. But it just bippers right over. Like this. I get on it. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Goodbye. My oldest typically doesn't like to be on camera because, but every once in a while he does when he does something cool. All right. Or that he thinks is cool. Okay. Look at that. So here we go. Again. One other thing is tomatoes are very forgiving if you break them. I have actually even seen people's, like, well, I know, if they frosted, maybe not this small, but the tops, they cut the tops off, they grow back from the root. Tomatoes want to grow. If you keep getting frost after frost, mm, mine kept coming back, but eventually they die in the summer. Eventually it's just like pointless because they can't survive. All right, so I have a couple in here that are wee little. A wee too small. So, and this I did a lot more with my Romas because there were just so many that the tiny ones I couldn't bear to throw out. So I would plant a couple in together. You'll find this at stores as well if you're buying starts. Look for the ones that have multiple plants in it. Not always do they have it, but then you get more bang, double the bang for your buck. So I think they'll be fine in here, hopefully. Um, our last frost date, in theory, is not till June 5th. 15th um see cute but since they're going into the high tunnel they'll get to be planted out way before that it's a snowy day in the neighborhood it just makes me happy watching them go into their new little homes but each of these little plants lord willing is a great deal whoa big old root this is a great deal food security for us so we ordered our chicks this year from Murray McMurray Hatchery I ordered them back in January and I got an email this week last week that um, they came down with the bird flu they're having to deal with that which a lot if you don't aren't familiar with that it like your birds start dying off and then they got tested they tested their flock, they were very diligent, and they tested positive for it. Uh, most, the majority of our order was canceled, and then the rest of it I canceled because we are closing down the flock this year. This is something I don't want to induce fear in you, but it's something that is should you should be aware of. It's like a weird topic. It's a weird thing as a market gardener, as a homesteader, as a person. <laughs> this is not to induce fear. This is just to have a conversation with you about what's affecting our farm and what I'm doing about it. That's simple as I put. Take what you will, take what you want there from this and go from there. So with that email, it sparked not crazy fear from me. It sparked urgency and a little bit of Hmm, what do we do about this now? Because our la some of our ladies are getting older, our hens, and they their prime years are like two to three years of egg laying. We have some that are four, four and five years old. We That's why we had more order in. And we're setting up a second flock. We're doing a mobile flock. I might do two. And now we're going to be raising our own meat birds. Sort of, hopefully. It'll be 50-50. My sister's lives very close to us. I trust my sister's flock <laughs> and it's about the only one we're going to allow in and it's hatching eggs that I'm getting from her. So she has purebred Brahmas, light white, the light bright, the light Brahmas, which Brahmas are a dual purpose breed. I love them because they're super docile and friendly. They're good moms. We've had our our best broody hen was a Brahma and she hatched out a bunch of chicks. If you, broody means that they're they go and lay on, they sit on their eggs for 21 days and hatch them out. 
and they're trying to make some more babies that way which some if you just want for pure egg production you don't necessarily want a broody hen i always appreciate them unless there's like the majority of my flock is which has happened to me but you can't always guarantee it so we have a few incubators which i'll show you in a bit we have two they're just smaller ones and then my sister had one and i have all three going and i got a ton of eggs from her and the brahmas are dual purpose like i said they're more docile they do lay less eggs but they're consistent layers through the winter they're a hardy bird they're a big bird they have a lot of meat on their bones dual purpose meaning egg laying and meat so i love them for egg laying but the males do get rather large my sister has a couple roosters and they're just raptors they're just ginormous and so um the males we will turn into meat for the freezer because the bird flu isn't just affecting hatcheries it's affecting meat production it's affecting everything and i when i went to costco i know i know prices are going up i know it you all know it but the other day i went to costco with my mom and my sister and i grabbed a bag of chicken frozen chicken and it went up ten dollars from the last week my jaw dropped and I I don't know why because I've been mentally preparing or like we've seen inflation we've seen all this stuff happening before our eyes but it hit it hit home I think it was because the day or two prior I received that email with the bird flu so I was like oh prices are gonna go up I should hatch out my own because it's gonna be impossible to get chicks this year it's gonna be it's gonna get harder to get meat this year so I want to prepare for it the best I can and how I can do that is hatch out my own chicks get my own meat birds going and so forth so that's what we're doing i have three incubators full i have 45 eggs going <laughs> yeah i got a lot of eggs going we got a lot of chicks coming and so far what i can see they're doing pretty good so we're hatching out our own egg layers to reproduce our flocks we're also i'm hatching out this flock for my sister and i and a friend some friends of ours are going in on it and we're going to just tag team it together they're hatching out birds from their flock and we're hatching out birds from our flock and then we'll come together we'll have a meat processing chicken day and that's how we're going to do it so we're creating all these little things there's a bunch of snow outside it's starting to melt which i do love snow i'm a winter gal but consecutively in a week of april where it's like really garden prep time it is aggravating me a tidbit and plus my ice rinks all melted it's like the winter fun try to sing christmas carols but then you're like oh i'm in april it's just it's not the same <laughs> so this is what we this is one small thing two small or big things that we can do in our house in our farm is creating food security for our family and our community because with these hatching eggs i don't know if we'll sell them or whatnot but we can give them to family members we're gonna do our best to keep our flock we're gonna try and do the best we can and lord willing we don't this never reaches our farm but another good ooh, i almost put this one over there this is a what are you shibogan shibogan okay we're going to be doing the best we can with what we have because why not maybe maybe it gets better maybe it doesn't let me get these tomatoes in and i'll take you over to the incubators so i guess i'm the crazy chicken lady now these are technically only supposed to do 12 up to 12 eggs but i took out the they're automatic so they you need to rotate your eggs but because i did that correctly on our first round and then on these two i was like forget that crap i have to be home anyway so i might as well just turn them so every couple times a day i come in rotate them in, in these two incubators and i have 18 in each of those so there's quite a bit i'm not going to lift the the lid up because I just I already rotated them today and I don't want to let them lose too much humidity but here they are that's what we're doing so we're hatching out we got a bunch we got this year I invested in a heat plate instead of a heat light it's a plate that they can go under and you don't have to worry about the heat I'm going to take you into my laundry room show you the tomatoes I had already potted up it's a little wild in there with my tomatoes and but there is the washer going and dryer because I told you I'm a responsible citizen with laundry. So just bear that in mind. Okay. 
actually, this says four minutes of spinning. We're gonna come back in four minutes. I waited, so then you wouldn't have to hear the noise. My ponytail is crazy today, guys. What can I say? I got wild hair. Here's my San Marzano shelf. This whole shelf is San Marzano's. Some of them look good. Most of them look good. They're doing good. This I had to improvise to fit them all. <laughs> and then my Romas, I could tell that I was starting to get tired. They're not as pretty looking. This is my Roma shelf. My tomatoes I have yet to pot up. Yep. And these three are the next to pot up. Those are the ones we just did. These are some more. Looks like I have three more San Marzanos. Brad's Atomic Grape. Moscovich. And the Purple Russian. Here are some herbs I started. This is dill needs potted out. And my peppers are doing good. Chives, oregano. Some stuff aren't, they just started popping up a couple days ago. So I'm trying to keep this little makeshift humidity dome on them. So there we go. Yeah, somehow these all need to be potted up individually and fit in here. You see the dilemmas? I have another shelf like this out in the garage. I could add it. This is what I'm saying, like switching my lights, which is going to be a pain in the butt. But you kind of do, got to do what you got to do. I think they should go, they should be able to get out maybe mid-May, which is in like a month. <laughs> what I'm gonna do guys uh, I'll figure it out um, I have a, like a shop light and a couple more lights I could rig up and do I'm still probably gonna need an additional shelf we'll figure it out plus the peppers we didn't even think about those but they take forever so hopefully whenever you hear somebody mention food security it's them as I'm speaking for myself but I know this to be true is it is it's a comfort to me when I have food security, and I think it is for a lot of people, especially these days. Those chicks over there, massive. Those eggs, those incubators hatching out those eggs, they're massive food security. And I think we'll do another round. We'll keep going with the incubators. Um, and the tomatoes are out of control. I under, I know they're, we got, they're, they can be overwhelming. Because how many I have to up pot, I'm not concerned about that. I'm just doing a little bit every day and taking whoever is like looking the biggest and being like, okay, you could use it the most. Nobody's looking like sad or anything. I'm just potting them up as I have time or want to. And they're doing all really good to expand my growing situation. It's a good problem to have. Oh, got too many tomato starts. Okay, well, if I, if I fill up my high tunnel and I have no more and I fill up my other greenhouse and I have no more space and I fill up my mom's greenhouse and my sister's greenhouse and I fill up everybody's greenhouses, that's a massive blessing. My neighbors, whoever needs tomato starts. So it's not a burden. It's exciting. And also, um, it's a gift. I have... I can save a lot of these seeds. I'm going to be saving seeds off these tomatoes, Lord willing, if we get some. Lord willing that those tomatoes get going. And if I have too many starts, probably you're like, oh my gosh, that girl's got way too many starts. She's not even going to be able to plant them in that giant high tunnel. All of them, which is true. But the, they're just, a, they're a really awesome gift, especially this time of year. So we'll just spread the tomato love here, people. And I, I did a video about this a few weeks ago maybe over a month ago now, about just putting on your armor and not being fearful, but trusting in the Lord. And I'll link it above if you're wanting to, if you haven't seen that. It, it's kind of per pertaining to what I'm talking about now. It's just not being fearful, but diligently creating food security through my actions of growing food. Growing food is even growing birds. And this is a good time to raise chickens and stuff when I'm about to have a garden and lots of food, especially the meat chickens. You have a lot of excess of food. They just get fed a lot of your excess and not have to eat as much feed. And by the time summer's over, you won't have those extra mouths to feed. So half of those are roosters, perfect. If the majority of them are roosters, perfect. If they're hens, perfect. Maybe somebody in our neighborhood needs a small flock. There's always things that you can do to help 
and also trading. Barter and trading is becoming, I have been bartering and trading for since we've been growing vegetables and flowers. I have friends that we, I traded yoga with my friend who's a yoga instructor. I have all sorts of things. You just never know what you're going to trade. Good to be prepared. It's good to have food security and not be fearful of what's to come. And how, at least in my family, I can be, have no fear is trusting the Lord and also being a good steward of what he has given us. And those chicks, we're going to be good stewards of those and just relying on the Lord to get us through because that's what we got to do. <laughs> also, did I tell you guys I have some flowers started in my high tunnel for flower farming? That's right. Flower farming. Part of me is like, are people really going to want to buy flowers? in this economy like when it's costing you a fortune for gas fortune for food fortune for all the things in life like are people gonna want to buy flowers i don't know those are the kind of things i still i have all the seeds so i might as well grow them we're gonna give it our best shot and maybe hopefully we get some we get some earn our monies back those flowers all right guys well i will see you on my next video thanks for following along and again i'll link that video up below if you want to go and watch it